When the BMW i8 was first introduced in 2014, I think I can speak for everybody in the car community by saying we were pretty stunned. I mean, this car looks like something out of the year 2035. From its aggressive front end to its butterfly doors and the see-through taillights, this is probably one of the most beautiful modern cars ever made. And I wouldn't be surprised if kids nowadays have a poster of this car on their walls. But then we heard the specs. One and a half liter turbocharged three cylinder engine that combined with the electric motor only produces 357 horsepower and 420 pound feet of torque and only does zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. I mean, those are figures that are great for a car under $100,000, but not necessarily for one that's $150,000. Well, now that you can pick a used one up nowadays for seventy dollars to $80,000, has my opinion of the BMW i8 changed? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's video. Now before we get started, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Jim at the Unique Car Guy for letting me borrow and review this car for you guys today. If you guys are in the market for a cool car that's pretty unique, I would definitely reach out to him and I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, he always has access to the coolest assortment of vehicles, so definitely check out his website and see what inventory he has. And be sure to reach out to him because he can find a specific car that you are interested in buying. Also, this specific BMW is for sale for $74,997. It's a 2017 and it is almost fully equipped. It comes in this limited edition protonic red color, which is definitely sure to turn heads when you're driving down the road. So be sure to reach out to Jim and purchase this vehicle before it's gone. In today's video, we're going to discuss five main things, and that is practicality, safety and security, interior and exterior features and quality, we're going to talk about some hidden features specific to this car, and then we're going to get it on the road and do some performance and handling. Now obviously some of the things we talk about in today's video are going to be less applicable given that this is a high performance vehicle. Let's kick it off with practicality. To keep it short, it's not super practical. Let's start off with getting into the vehicle. Well, it's not very easy. There is a large door seal, so you essentially have to fall into the seat and then pivot your body to get inside. And the same goes for getting out of the vehicle. When it comes to storage, there's no door pockets because the door opens upwards. You have two small compartments in the center arm console, one cup holder in the front, two cup holders in the back for a total of three, and a glove compartment. That's pretty much it. Even though this is a mid-engine car, the hood does not actually open to reveal a frunk as in other mid-engine sports cars. The main reason for this is because there are two motors in the car, a gas-powered engine in the back, and an electric motor in the front. So BMW doesn't want a lawsuit on their hands if you were to touch some of these electrical wires running through the front of the car. When you come to the back, there is a small trunk behind the engine that also isn't accessible. And the compartment is large enough to put some groceries and maybe a golf bag, but that's about it. The engine and the trunk compartment is separated from the interior of the car with a pretty thick piece of glass, so you're not going to feel any of the heat or the engine noise inside the cabin. Now, miles per gallon is where this car really excels. MPG for the gas engine is 28 combined and MPGE for the electric motor is 76 miles. 
It can also drive purely electric between 15 and 20 miles and speeds up to 75 miles per hour. The battery recharges using a standard 110 volt current for three and a half hours or a faster 220 volt current for about an hour and a half. However, you don't ever really need to recharge the battery because the gas powered engine will recharge the battery itself. In fact, putting the car into sport mode recharges the battery. So essentially driving this car very quickly and aggressively is better for the environment. The i8 is standard with all wheel drive, which should make year round driving easier if you live in colder climates. For practicality, I would rate this car a six out of 10, which is common amongst mid-engine sports cars. What it lacks in storage space, it makes up for with all wheel drive capability and really strong MPG. Now let's talk about safety and security. This car comes with six airbags, front and rear parking sensors, a backup camera, and a carbon fiber reinforced interior cabin. Now, although this car has not been rated by the NHTSA or the IIHS, I imagine it would do pretty well in a car accident given this carbon fiber reinforced passenger cell. Where this car lacks is the list of features when it comes to safety and security. For example, you cannot purchase this car with blind spot monitoring, a feature that is pretty standard amongst pretty cheap mid-sized sedans. For this reason, I rate safety and security a six out of 10. Although I'm not concerned if you get into a car accident in this vehicle, I do think that some of those technological features should have been added to this car over time, specifically this one being a 2017 model and most Honda Accords from 2017 coming with blind spot monitoring. All right, now let's discuss the interior and exterior features and quality. Well, I think the exterior speaks for itself. That's where BMW really excelled in this car. I would rate it a 10 out of 10. I mean, just look at these butterfly doors. Now, although looks are subjective, this car is truly one of a kind and it's going to get massive attention wherever it goes. The front fascia is very aggressive and typical BMW. The butterfly doors make it look like it's at least $250,000. And the way the rear end tapers into the taillights and allows air to flow through really differentiates this car from everything else on the road. This specific vehicle is also outfitted with custom fabricated BMW i8 wheels and those are available to purchase with the vehicle for a little extra. The interior of the BMW is also very inviting. The door is very well upholstered and padded. The steering wheel is thick and comfortable and very nice to hold when you're driving it free spiritedly. The speedometer is all digital and a very clear display. BMW was ahead of its time when this was introduced back in 2015 because very few manufacturers were doing all digital displays. The center console display is typical for a BMW. It is a little small for 2020 standards, but for 2017, this is the appropriate size. The iDrive system is typical across all BMW products. So if you've used a BMW before, you're gonna be pretty well acquainted with this system. It takes a few minutes to figure out all of the different menus, but overall, it's a pretty intuitive system. Moving down a little bit lower, you have plastic buttons that are nice to the touch and the carbon fiber throughout the interior cabin looks amazing. It's real carbon fiber and you can definitely tell and BMW spared no expense by putting it throughout the interior of the vehicle. Moving further back, the center console is pretty soft to the touch and good for longer road trips. And the seats are pretty comfortable as well. They are not perfect, but for a sports car, they are fantastic. Moving into the back seats, well, they're essentially unusable unless you don't have any legs. This is typical among sports cars, but essentially the back seats are used for storage space more than carrying passengers. There is very little headroom and legroom, so if anybody is sitting in the back, I would recommend it for shorter trips. Overall, I would rate the interior an 8 out of 10. Although it has some really nice materials throughout the inside, especially that carbon fiber trim, I think it's lacking in some of the technology, especially for 2020. Now let's talk about some of the cool slash hidden features of this car. One of them has to be the speedometer screen and how the entire screen changes depending on what mode you put it in. So in sport mode, everything will light up red and just add a sporty feel to the interior of the vehicle. Another kind of cool and funny feature is when you have the gear stick in the sport mode and you switch the modes into eco, the joystick will actually push back out of sport mode into the regular drive mode. 
Now, another cool feature that's typical among BMWs is the adjustable ambient lighting. I think BMW did a great job spreading it out equally throughout the vehicle, making the interior cabin very nice. A kind of quirky feature is the light next to the start stop button, which pulsates before you turn the engine on. But when you push the brake pedal, it actually lights up that area really brightly as if to say it's ready to start the engines. Now, as you can expect with a three cylinder engine, the car actually pipes in additional sound into the cabin to make it sound like it's a powerful V8. It's not perfect, but it sounds pretty good for a three cylinder engine. Now, the funny thing about this car is it actually comes with two transmissions. There's a two speed for the electric motor up front and a six speed for the gas engine in the back. This car can also come equipped with laser headlights. Now this vehicle is not equipped with it, but that is an option that you can purchase from the factory. Another cool feature of the car is carbon fiber throughout the entire interior and part of the exterior of the vehicle. The door frame and the door itself is made of complete carbon fiber and the entire vehicle is actually built using 100% renewable energy. And although a head up display is a common feature, given this car's lack of overall technology, it's nice to have a head up display. All right, so now for the fun part, let's see if this thing drives as good as it looks. The performance and handling was actually a pleasant surprise. The vehicle accelerates and handles better than its specs. The 0-60 to 60 in 4.2 seconds is definitely not the quickest, but due to the car's size and your seating position, it feels quicker. The car handles curves very well. That could do with the custom wheels and wider tires. Out of the factory, the car comes with skinny 245s in the rear, but nonetheless, it handles the corners well. The i8 also charges its battery in sport mode, so halfway into the ride we switched into an all-electric mode by pushing the e-drive button and the car became completely silent. You can drive in this mode on a fully charged battery for about 20 miles and speeds up to 75 miles per hour. Overall, I was very pleased with the driving dynamics of this car, and although the specs are not at the level of other $150,000 cars, they will be more than sufficient in 95% of all situations. There's always going to be a faster or quicker car regardless of what vehicle you drive. I would rate the performance and handling a 9 out of 10. The only thing bringing it down one notch are the specs on paper in comparison with its peers in the same price point. So what's the verdict? Is this car worth $150,000? Unfortunately, it's not. This car looks like it should do 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds. It looks like it will sound like a jet airplane, but it doesn't. And at $150,000, BMW just didn't make the mark. That could be the reason why these cars have depreciated so much in the first few years since its release. However, picking up a used one for seventy dollars to $80,000 is an absolute steal. This car is phenomenal at that price point. BMW tried making the perfect $150,000 supercar and unfortunately, they didn't do that. What they did was create the perfect $75,000 supercar. The zero to 60, the engine specs, the horsepower, none of that really matters because when you're driving this car, it satisfies probably 95% of any supercar that you could own. 
It's quick, it handles well, and it looks like a million bucks. So to answer the question I asked in the beginning, has my opinion changed now that this car is half the price it used to be? Absolutely. If I had $75,000 to spend today, I would buy this car, just for the looks alone. I again want to thank Jim at the Unique Car Guy for letting me review this car. Make sure you reach out to him because I don't expect this one is going to last very long. I will put the link in the description below. Definitely let me know your thoughts on the BMW i8. For me, I think it is the perfect sub $100,000 supercar. But what do you think of it? Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future content. And find me on Instagram at Schwazy underscore. Until the next review, I'll catch you next time.